Okay, now this is something important for your uh, task which you have taken up. Uh, acoustic scene analysis or audio event detection. You prepared a data set, so you can do something useful with that data set. And what you can do useful, we'll be discussing today and also in the next class probably. So this is a paper which I found today. <laughs> I thought this is a useful paper and this, this can, it contains many um, useful aspects of this problem. It's a kind of overview paper of this problem. Detection and classification of acoustic scenes and events. Right? Uh, this is in 2015, so it does not include that many deep learning approaches. But the basic basics are given very nicely in this paper. And if you want to go to deep learning approaches, then just you understand these basics and then just apply, instead of their methods, you apply one black box neural network. <laughs> it could be a, an LSTM or a recurrent neural network or CNN or whatever you want. Okay. So let's uh, go through this paper in some detail. <clears throat> let's go through the abstract first. Is it visible? Can you all see what is on the screen? No? Why don't you come in the front? <laughs> so we have a simple technology <laughs> uh, that you come in the front and you can see. Okay. Abstract. So for intelligent systems to make best use of audio <laughs> modality, it is important that they recognize not just speech and music which have been researched as specific tasks, but also general sounds in everyday environments. Okay, so this uh, paper is about analyzing general sounds in everyday environment. Like you recorded some sound speech versus music versus door knocking, so <coughs> coughing. Uh, so why do you need these tasks? We will see some applications in this paper also. Okay. To stimulate research in this area, so they started a new public research challenge. It is still going on. It's called DK's challenge. It's very popular even today. It means every year they hold it. They have been holding it since 2000, I don't remember, maybe 12 or 13. So now still it is going on. It's very popular. And uh, in this paper, we report the state of the art in 2015 <laughs> in automatically classifying audio scenes and automatically detecting and classifying audio events. For example, if you put your recorder in a classroom setting versus you put it in your mess versus you put it in your what else, room versus in your hostel room or you put it in some uh, shopping mall, right? So different sounds, uh, if you put outside IIT gate on, on the main road, different acoustic scenes will be there. Can you classify automatically? That is the automatically classifying the audio scenes Scene means the audio scene, what is going on in the acoustic environment. And automatically detecting and classifying audio events. If you want to detect particular event, like, okay, this is a bird chirping, <coughs> this is a cough, the people talking. So all these events you can very easily make sense of, but can a machine do that? Uh, so, and then this paper, they say, we survey prior work as well as state of the art represented by the submissions to the challenge. So basically they organize the challenge, which they are doing still, they are organizing challenge every year. So in this paper, they are analyzing, they are presenting what challenges they faced in preparing this challenge. And then what were the submissions and how were their performances? What are the different approaches people used to solve this challenge problem? So. In our experience as challenge hosts may be useful to other organizing, uh, maybe useful to those who are organizing challenges in similar domains. We created new audio data sets and baseline systems for the challenge and, okay, fine. So basically they are presenting their work. Okay, the paper starts with an introduction like any other paper. So I'll just read the important points which I have highlighted here. So generally we talk in terms of speech and music. These are, so basically when you write a paper, you have to give a context. What is it about? What are you going to present? Because, so basically the introduction is something even a lay person should be able to understand. Lay person means somebody who is not into this field of acoustic event detection, like all of you. You are all students and you have not worked in this area specifically, but you have a good background of machine learning by now hopefully, <laughs> and you have good area, good understanding of DSP and related concepts. 
So uh, basically the introduction is written in such a way that you can relate to the problem first. So what they are writing is, speech and music are just two of the many types of sounds that can be heard in a typical indoor or outdoor environment. Increasingly, machines deployed in diverse environments can hear, whether they be mobile phones, hearing aids, or autonomous robots, but they can make sense. But can they make sense of what they hear? You can put audio recorders everywhere. People have hearing aids, right? Uh, people who have hearing aids, they have very difficult time in understanding uh, intelligently to make sense of what you are speaking if there is a lot of background noise. Because in hearing aids, they put many filters to compress the audio because they are ultimately stimulating uh, your ears and ears um, in certain way. Uh, consider cochlear implants or something. They, they have a limited bandwidth. So they stimulate your uh, audio channels uh, in, in some way. So if there is a lot of noise in the sounds, your uh, quality of hearing drastically reduces if you are using hearing aids. If you are not using hearing aids, you can still make sense of it very well. But with hearing aids, it becomes very difficult. Similarly with mobile phones. What happens in mobile phones? You have band bandwidth problem, right? You cannot send entire information. We discussed it. No, we did not discuss it. Uh, so basically, you have to do downsampling or you do some processing to compress the information. Uh, and if you don't do it properly, uh, you, your noise will get amplified and your actual message will be uh, suppressed. So, okay. So, uh, so it's important to not just make sense of speech or music, but also to make sense of other sounds in the environment. Okay. And okay, sounds... Uh, information gathered from semantic from a semantic audio analysis, basically audio analysis, can be useful for further progress processing such as robot navigation, user alerts, or analyzing and predicting patterns of information. Okay, sorry, I think I missed this line. Sound is often a useful complement to modalities such as video, carrying information not otherwise present, such as information from speech and bird song. Bird song. So, if you want to use cameras they get occluded if anything is in the way, right? But sound is not having this problem, right? You can hear sounds even if there is an occlusion, there, are, there is some wall in between, there is any person standing in between, still you can hear sounds. I can hear sounds in the next room very easily. Why? Because sound is uh, not, uh, uh, does not travel only in the line of sight along the line of sight. You can, it can, uh, what is it called? Diffraction. The diffraction is very strong in sounds. Uh, and also, another important quality of sound is it is not opaque. Objects are opaque, right? One object will cover the other object completely. But sounds are not opaque. Even if I'm speaking, somebody's coughing, you can still make sense of me, right? You can still hear. But if, let us say, I'm writing on the board and people are just moving in, in between, you cannot see and you will, uh, uh, you, your vision will be obstructed, hampered very badly. But in speech, people are coughing, no problem. <laughs> you can still make sense of it. Okay, so the goal, uh, ultimate uh, idea is our goal here is to develop systems that can extract information about the environment from the audio data. Just by hearing, you can tell about the environment, what is going on, what is happening. Uh, okay, background. So after introduction, it is a good thing to give some background. This is useful for people who have some idea in audio research or similar research domain, right? So this, it is more specific than introduction. You are narrowing down your problem further. You are making it more technical now. So, so now acoustic scene classification aims to characterize the acoustic. So there are two problems in this paper, right? First is acoustic scene classification, other is acoustic event detection. So the first is acoustic scene classification. What is that? So this aims to characterize the acoustic environment of an audio stream by selecting a semantic label for it. As we discussed, is it the mess? Is it the classroom? Is it the uh, traffic outside IITK gate? Is it a hospital? Like uh, you can give a label. It can be considered, a, okay, what kind of task will you make it? 
it can be a means supervised and supervised multi class classification multi level classification or what 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 could you call it <coughs> huh source separation will be difficult okay we are we are just putting semantic label for the audio we are not separating the sounds uh huh okay so we are discussing here acoustic scene classification it's not events it is scene yes yeah so you will have single class right for each scene this is the classroom that is it so this will be a multi class classification problem right you give single label to your input it's not multiple labels single uh, class okay so uh, now the when classifying a time based media a key issue is how to analyze temporally structured data to produce a single label representing the media object overall so yeah. see i just found this paper and i didn't know that this will so well resonate with what we have studied until now so we have studied the temporal sequences right this is a major challenge how do you take care of temporally evolving data audio is evolving with time temporal patterns are there so this is a major challenge how do you uh, take care of that use it for classification there are two main strategies found in the literature so see now anybody with little bit understanding of machine learning they can very well relate to this paper there are two main strategies for temporal uh, classification one is to use a set of low level features under the bag of frames approach which treats the scene as a single object and aims at representing it as the long term statistical distribution of some set of local spectral features is it clear uh so what it says is you have an audio you break it down into windows let's say 25 milliseconds or 50 milliseconds windows each from each window you extract useful features let's say uh spectral features or some features right and then you consider this entire audio as a bag of frames frame means window bag of frames means you give away the temporal ordering within this uh whole uh input audio you give it the give away the temporal ordering consider each frame as isolated so now this is a bag like in bag you just put everything together you don't consider any ordering right so bag of frames uh in this way you represent your audio uh file right so your audio file is just a collection of spectra without any temporal ordering in between okay but still there is some temporal uh sorry there is some uh co-occurrence information present right co-occurrence information is present how between the frames between the frames between the frames no like each frame like when i cough versus when i sneeze the temporal information is lost temporal dynamics is lost but co-occurrence is still present right in this representation why because in the same bag you contain all those frames so there is co-occurrence still present you are not giving away all the information you are retaining the co-occurrence information you are just giving away the exact temporal sequence so this is an important point here you are making an assumption but you are not giving away all the information co-occurrence means if i am saying hari so i lost the temporal ordering but still i have an h i have an a i have a r i have an e if i if i give you in jumbled form right you can still make out okay maybe this is hari right uh, but if i give you just one h nothing else you cannot tell anything so similarly so i am giving you a bag of features so just like in hari example it could be a bag of words a bag of characters or bag of phonemes right so it's easier to work with bag of phonemes rather than working with a sequence of phonemes uh sorry it is easier to infer from the bag of phonemes rather than from a single phoneme you are not taking the time the time difference and the time difference in a set that you want to 
Yes, co-occurrence. Yes, co-occurrence is there. So this is an important term, co-occurrence. <coughs> so co-occurrence information is there in the bag of words. Oh, okay. So okay. Now what do you do? Uh, so they are saying that those individual spectral features could be MFCC features, MEL frequencies, septal coefficients. We have not looked into MFCCs, right? We didn't look into it. Did we look into it? But this is some stand, something standard. You just, I think we discussed briefly that you take the envelope, means you take the spec, you take the spectrum, you break the spectrum into small, small energy bands, extract the energy, and then find, then compress it using uh, another Fourier transform, DCT transformation. Look at the low frequency components, which will capture the overall variation, the envelope. Right. So, anyways, this is just a standard thing. Uh, MFCC features. Uh, so, MFCC features have been found to be useful to characterize the spectral properties, uh, the over, the long, uh, the low frequency spectral properties. Uh, then you use a Gaussian mixture. You can use a Gaussian mixture model to model each class. For example, if I give you Hari, uh, these H A R I, these are uh, discrete, uh, discrete random variables. But or these are instances of discrete of a discrete random variable. But let us say spectral uh, features, MFCC features. You, you can use a Gaussian mixture model to represent. Uh, maybe I can draw it. Uh, let us consider a two-dimensional spectral feature, it means x1, x2. Uh, if you look at your uh, single time frame, it may lie somewhere here, right? Another time frame may lie somewhere here, another time frame may lie somewhere here. And in this way you can form clusters, right? Uh, I think when I say hurry, uh, so what is this? I can use a GMM to model this. Okay, this is when, okay, let's say <coughs> cough, right? Now let us say sneezing. Same x2, x1, but the distribution will be different. You will have some things here, something here, let us say, right? So every time you sneeze, your audio file will look something like this. Means your each spectral uh, uh, frame, each spectral feature from each frame will look like this. Means this, is a, this point is a vector, this point is a vector, like that how many vectors you have? Capital T, means my audio file was this. x1 comma x2 comma <coughs> x capital T right this was my one audio file right so this is my x1 x2 okay if you want to represent it like this to be consistent with our notation then we just plot this is your x1, this is your let's say x10 or x9, right? For cuff, for sneezing, your x1 is somewhere here, your x9 is maybe in the same thing. Okay, now I will ask you some questions. My question is, Okay, first, is it clear? Is it clear? You are assuming whenever you cuff, your output bag has a distribution like this. Whenever you sneeze, your output bag has a distribution like this. Right? Now my question is, Okay, now my question is, is this representation uh, affected by temporal shift? 
I'm recording your sound. Let's say somebody is coughing. I'm recording it. I started the recording at t equal to zero, and the person coughs at t equal to two. Let us say, coughs, and then at t equal to five, I stop the recording. Right? Should I write it down to be more precise? You started the recording here. At t equal to two, somebody starts coughing, and the coughing continues. And at t equal to five, I stop the recording. Another instant. I start the recording at t equal to 0.5 or 1 by 2. Somebody starts coughing, and then I stop the recording at 5 seconds. This is time. So, is this representation affected by this temporal shift? Huh? It shouldn't be. Yes, it shouldn't be affected because I am not considering temporal ordering. I'm only considering the uh, co-occurrence information. Okay, good. That is why this approach is a meaningful approach and it is useful. Uh, I think we can discuss this in the next class. But uh, you can go through this paper. Uh, this paper, I will post these slides on Piazza or I'll put them in the folder. All of you can access that folder, right? Okay, I'll put this in the folder. This paper is there. Detection and classification of acoustic scenes and events, and you just go through it. Thank you.